Hello and welcome to Let's Talk, a Mazars podcast about doing business in the time of COVID-19. In this series, we will hear from Mazars experts who've been helping clients navigate the business impact of coronavirus. They will tell us how their clients have been affected and what they've learned during the crisis, as well as how they have responded and what happens next. So let's talk. Today's guest is Faye Tannenbaum, who speaks to us from New York about the impact on private equity and the importance of contingency plans in investment strategy. Hello, my name is Faye Tannenbaum, and I am the leader of the U.S. Financial Services and Private Equity Tax Practice at Mazars. The main concerns I've seen private equity clients dealing with have centered around investor relations and planning for the return to business as usual. On the financial services side, clients are of course concerned with market conditions. As interest rates drop and the market remains volatile, it's been a very erratic time to do business. Entities operating within the private equity space need to be able to access new deals, as well as an investor pool that is willing to invest in these deals. Private equity relies on deals. It's not a consistent business. You have to wait and find the right deals. That business model has now generally been put on hold. So in response to that, I've seen a lot of private equity clients go into maintenance mode and look at how their businesses are run internally and make improvements. Clients have also been spending time thinking about creative ways to structure new investments. Historically, private equity has invested in specific industries in a very heavy way. And the operating entities, which are the source of the existing investments, have further been struggling with maintaining their customer base and their business. Restaurants and hotels, for example, which are a focus of many private equity investments, have suffered throughout this pandemic, as have other service businesses. How has your team responded? Our response at Mazars has revolved around both compliance and consulting. Making sure our clients are compliant with all filings is a high priority for the private equity industry, as it is for all our clients. And we've been able to help clients ensure that they meet this goal. Reporting to investors is also a particularly sensitive and high profile area. And given the financial impact of such reporting on the investors personally, this has been a major focus for most of our clients. The changing risk and compliance landscape has mounted the pressure on our clients to reassess their operating model, including information technology infrastructure, security environment, supply channels, and most importantly, the skill sets of people to perform multiple functions remotely for extended time. Planning opportunities have centered around areas such as expense analysis and minimization in order to help them operate more efficiently, as well as developing strategies for growth and expansion in the future. I think it's fair to say that lots of clients have been waiting for business to get back to usual. It's important for them and us to consider what happens if things don't bounce back and how business models need to shift to keep up. What's your advice to someone listening? My advice for private equity businesses would be to look at new sources of investment. Look at what is working elsewhere, opportunities outside your typical portfolio, perhaps. And if that means looking at more traditional opportunities than you're used to, then do it. But know that you'll need to model for the long term and wait to make any return over a longer period than you could be used to. In short, play the long game. The clients we've spoken to are adopting new ways to be relevant for their customers in this change and beyond. The uncertainty is forcing businesses to prepare for the future, and the thematic issues are to manage risk, reduce costs, and improve productivity. We've gone through difficult stretches of the economy. At some point, investment will shed revenue, but model for the long term in order to be sure, especially now. The crisis management period for the first wave is now over. From March to June, clients understandably thought about their people, their space, their connectivity. Clients of mine use their crisis plans to do so, making sure everyone was safe and happy with their at-home work setup. But now, as a community, we have to move on. How has the government responded in your local market? The U.S. government, for its part, has provided lots of ways to help, especially loan programs for smaller businesses, deferral of payroll taxes, and near-interest-free loans for others. By pushing deadlines back, the government has been able to alleviate cash flow pressure for taxpayers. Long-term solutions include strategic and measured investment in technology, people, and operating model transformation. 
digital transformation to convert the operating model and gradually transition to perform processes remotely, invest in control transformation like robotic process automation, data analytics and cloud, conduct cyber assessments to reevaluate infrastructure and security to have non-key employees transition permanently to work from home. Most importantly, assess the human capital and identify skill sets that are relevant in today's environment. There is talk of additional measures, but it will all depend on the second wave and how much state governments want to recoup their losses and when. My advice to people listening would be to focus on revenue generation. Think about alternative sources of income, not just ways to cut costs. Review your contingency plans and write new ones if they are needed. Contingency plans are coming into their own, especially with this pandemic. Things that we thought were never possible are now happening. In recent years, businesses have gotten into the habit of only doing projections and modeling in one direction. But now it's time to think about worst case scenarios and ask how your business is going to respond when the projections and modeling need to go the other way. It can pay to plan for what happens when things go wrong. Thanks for listening to Let's Talk a podcast from Mazars about doing business in the time of COVID-19. If you have enjoyed this, you can find more by searching Mazars Let's Talk.